Because we know that it is a blessing to be able to bless you, Father. Yeah. I was uh, talking to Zion, Father. We will open our mouths, mouths and let people know that you are our God, Father. That the things that they see that's fruit in our lives is because of the God that we serve, Father. We simply want to say thank you in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So we will go ahead and get started this morning with some praise and worship. From our lovely leader this morning, Apostle uh, Janice Daniels. Y'all know that this is one of her favorite things to do is praise and worship. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, God. Amen. Amen. We bless the Lord this morning. Amen. He is so good. Amen. And his mercy endures forever. Glory to God. I had to work at 12 a.m. last night. Jesus. Yeah, but we're here. Amen. But now woke us up. Amen. Hallelujah. And said, hey, you got somewhere to be. Amen. He said, go to work. Glory to God. Go, go, go to your real job. Come on. Go to your real job. Amen. God is so good. Praise God. I cannot tell it all. Amen. Glory to God, he says, amen. Like the song say, he's the one, but in my soul, amen. Right. Glory to so God. Good. You understand what they mean, glory to God. He's the one in my soul, praise God. He's brought us through uh, many dangerous things and unspeakable. Yes, glory. Amen. Amen. glory to God. And, and I just bless and praise God for being all that he is. Amen. Yes, yes, yes. Glory to God, amen. We want everybody to praise God. And, uh, if God has placed it on your heart to be a part of this, we to praise God. We want you to, to submit to that, praise God. I was talking to the pastor this uh, past week about how people are just so scattered. They know where they're supposed to be, amen, but they're chasing after fashion. They're chasing after Oh, this is a big choir at this church. Oh, this choir is not going to hold it. And they call it and they don't, it look like. And, it they, look like. and they don't understand, praise God, that you have to be where God has called you yeah, yeah, to yeah. be, praise God. Amen. Amen. Because if you're not, amen, you're going to have a hard time. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. I am that one that will tell you you're going to have a hard time. Amen. You just gonna see all right at first, praise God. Then you gonna you gonna have a hard time. And you're gonna wonder why am I having a hard time? Amen. Amen. Glory to God, but you gotta get where God has placed you. Amen. Bless the Lord. Amen. Amen. Let's get back to the end. Let's get back to the end. Let's get back to the end. 
He'll nudge it. Come on. He'll get rid of that person. And then you go up a little higher. Come on. Yeah. This person that was lying and they biting and backstabbing and you didn't know it, they gone. Mm -hmm. But if you were to find out why God ripped really the fool, because they didn't like you, was jealous of you, come yeah, on. You were always, come on. You always you. Yeah, you be fighting. We go through. Like but we go through to get to the place yeah. that God has ordained for us to be. Come on. I, I've never met a person say they ain't never had a hard time. Come yeah. on. Glory to God. But I had to learn how to trust. I had to learn how to trust. Mm -hmm. Come on. Glory to God. It was homelessness and, 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 and eating at the uh eating at the two sure, pictures yeah, like sure. that place. At shelters, living in a shelter. Yeah. I was living in a shelter because they were bad. I was living in the shelter, y'all. But why is it? Why I was in the shelter, I didn't bother with Still doing God's work. Why? Even at the same two kids in line with everybody else. Come on, I'm still telling Praise people how good God Praise is. Praise I'm Praise doing the spiritual life lady at the shelter coach spot. She say, you should be doing my job. <laughs> she say, you should be doing my job. How are you? Say, how did you get everybody to gather to hear the word? I say, I don't know, I get to see the topic. Amen. I get to see how good he is. Yeah. She say, but they look at you and you the same thing. I say, exactly. Mm -hmm. But I serve a God. Come on. Amen. That'll make a way. Okay, I know. Amen. Come on. Now. I serve a God that say this too. Come on. She'll pray. Amen. Oh, what is that word? It came to pass. Amen. Right. I say, I say, look at that statement like this. Yeah, I'm here right now. But guess what? It's gonna be behind me in a minute. Mm -hmm. I'll be able to stand and give my testimony. Amen. Yeah. Glory to God. Yes, I've been in places where I lost everything. Yeah. Come on, furniture, car, power. And then instead of people helping, they're going to tell me why I failed. Right. Why I'm in a position I'm in. <laughs> Come on, you ever seen? You ever met somebody take the knife and just point it at Turn the knife. Come on, y'all, I'm already down. I'm already right. boom. Right. You're going to come in here and you're going to put the salt. Or twist the knife, as you see. Come on! Amen. If I didn't have a praise in my spirit, I would have let it take me down. Mm -hmm. yes, yes. I had folks in my own family that said, tell their kids not to be like me. Mm -hmm. Come on. That's what I was the poster child for. Don't be like her. Come on. Yeah. That's what I was. Mm -hmm. It was in the outside of other people. Come on. Yeah, right, right. And this was saying. Come on. And then. And that's all. Don't be like her. Mm -hmm. Don't be like, don't do what she, don't be like her. That was what I was. They was always waiting on me with another top story. <laughs> oh, well, I turned it into company. They was always waiting on me. Yeah. Come on. But then God said, get, he said, walk away from that. I was laying in bed last night, and the Lord said, walk away from family. I mean, you tell people, before a time, you got to walk away from family. Mm -hmm. Ooh, no. Mm -hmm. For a time, for a time. Yes, make it plain. You may have to separate yourself. So Lord can put you together. Come on. Yes. So Lord can show you who He is and who you are. So for a time, you may have to separate yourself. Yes. Can I just talk to somebody yes. right away? Yes. Yes. You might have to say, you know what? Yes. And you might have to call.
money at one. Mm-hmm. But walk away. Yeah. Don't feel bad about walking away. Mm. Don't feel bad about turning your back to negative, uh, uh, negative people and negative saying. Come on. Yeah, yeah, come on now. What are you feeding your spirit anyway? Right. Do you right. know every time somebody talks to you, they feed your spirit? Mm. Every time somebody tells you you ain't nothing next food, they give it to your spirit. God said, I need you to walk away so I can tell you who you are. So I can tell you what you deserve. So I can show you new things. Come out. Oh, mm. You got some folk in your family that think you won't only make it if they give you permission to make it. Oh my God. Oh, oh, wow. You got some folk in your family that scandalize your name and you turn around and say they're trying to help you. I'm trying to let you know what God is saying today. He's saying, walk away. Mm. We always know this journey to here. Everybody say who they blocking on Facebook. <laughs> I need you to block up your real life. Amen. Come on. Come on. Forget that website. I need you to block up in real life. They are they have not been good for your life. Oh my god, I can stay right there for a minute. Well, they have not been good for your life. I'm trying to speak right now. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. What? I ain't gonna say this is that. We wanna try to figure out what we always thinking. Why well, I feel right. like we cannot because it's somebody in your life that you put in your heart that's the anchor. Oh my god. Oh, they are the anchor. They discredit you. They talk about you. Then they want you to come over there and be around them. Uh-huh. But what they're doing is they put all their insecurities and all their disappointment and all of the stuff they feel about themselves on you. Because mm-hmm. they know you're going to make it. They know that you are anointed. They know that you are called. They know that you are gifted. So you know what they do? If they can keep that foot on your neck, then they can feel good about it. Ooh, you better preach. Mm. Come on, now, brother. You may as well go get the scripture. I woke up with a word in my spirit. I see. I see. I woke up with a word in my spirit. I'm not afraid of I'm walking on the word. It's okay. We, I, I'm just going to go ahead and walk on the word. It's no, okay. Amen. I'm going to give you a word. Amen. I was laying in the bed and I was feeling some type of way. You know, I came up in a house with eight kids. So I was, we were singing some stuff at the church, all that kind of stuff. Glory to God. And so you automatically had a support system. Because you had eight kids. You can go. Singing yeah. together. You better get that. No Christ right thing. Oh, when I got when I got grown, come on. And everybody started going in separate ways and everybody's personality started changing. You know, so they think. Right. Anyway, <laughs> so that person everybody becomes grown, you know. Grown, grown. Let me tell you about grown people. Amen. Come on now. Grown people that's not satisfied with their life or happy with their life have to keep their foot on somebody so they can feel good. Oh, can I help somebody today? Oh my God. Oh, sometimes you get in a relationship with somebody that, that when they saw you, they knew you were too good for, but they got with you anyway. Now they want to break you into a thousand pieces so they can deal with you. Can I help somebody today? Sometimes the very people that you love is your biggest enemy. Because you can't see who they really are. Oh, I, I, I'm going to hold on to it because I can help them and I want to do this and I want to let. They are an anchor. If you messed up and they messed up, you can't see one of y'all can help each other. You got to get out the way and let God heal you and let God come on. Come on. Ooh. Come on. Oh, Lord have mercy. I was just trying to see you a little praise and worship service. All right. Let God work. Hold through you. Let you won't have to let go. Mm-hmm. You think you might let go, let go. No, just let go. Uh-huh. God already got you. But where you've been messing up, man, you've been putting more trust in man than you have in God. Listen, it was a lot of things I was doing in my life. My husband said, Y'all just go shut this stuff down. It's a lot of stuff I've been doing in my life to, to, so I can get some accolades from family. Ooh, can I throw it out there? So I get 
with family. Maybe this, maybe this right here, uh, uh, they'll come around if they see me doing this right here. Can I just expose the enemy? The enemy will get in your mind and you'll be doing a bunch of stuff that you ain't got no that, that cause you to waste time because you're trying to get somebody to love you. You're trying to get somebody to accept you. You're trying to get somebody to say, I'm a part of the week. I'll explain that one later. <laughs> but the truth of the matter is, if God look, if God made you to be separate, that's exactly what he wants you to do. Joseph's brother sold him. Do you understand me? Sold him. Glory to God. When they sold him, then watch this page. Watch this page. But I'm going to put So let's stay right here with Joseph. His brother sold him. Because they were jealous of him. Right. And they didn't want Come on. Because right. the daddy loved Joseph. Right. The daddy favored Joseph. Gave him a bad coat. You know, many colors. Come on. Right. Was always thinking. And Joseph was always prophesying and seeing what the Lord was going to use him to do. And let me say this right quick. Never make yourself smaller for somebody so somebody else can feel better. Jesus. Never downplay your call. Never downplay what God has shown you, where you have been, what you have experienced, and who God has made you be. Just so somebody else can receive you. They got mad. They got mad. These brothers were jealous. So they got rid of Joseph. Y'all gonna tell you what that is in this day and time? They start talking about you. They start lying on you. Family members, scandalizing you. Yeah. Oh, she ain't real. Oh, she a hypocrite. Oh, she fake. Oh, she. They start talking about you. Yeah. Slandering your name. Mm. My God. So Joseph got him and got sold. He, 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 now he working for somebody. Right. Right. Why are you working for somebody? I'm going to tell you how. See, this is what I say. You think that what you're going through, you know, the devil, but sometimes God allows things to happen to push you into position. Watch this. So Joseph is working for this man and his wife. Right. The wife see Joseph and said, oh, I got to have it. Right. Why the husband called Joseph said, I will not. Come on. Joseph said, I ain't no I love the, the man. I said, I love him. I love you. I'm not going to do it. So she lied when her husband got that. Oh, he. Come on. Joseph could have woke up and said, if it ain't one thing, it's enough. But he didn't. No. Joseph got thrown in jail. Come on. Can I help somebody today? Some of us are in prison in some right now and don't understand why we are there. Oh, Lord, have mercy. But you got to go through what? To get to. If Joseph had to be rejected by his family, oh, Lord, I'm going to just make you see it right here. If Joseph hadn't been rejected, Joseph would have been pushed into the position that he was in. Joseph ended up in jail. Then Joseph ended up a pharaoh. You got to come on, get me now. A pharaoh hit the land, and Joseph was in a position to save his family. Joseph could have killed them all when he became a pharaoh. But Joseph still had the love of God in his heart. He still understood that whatever he planned, he walked, he was going to be in a position to save his family. You cannot forget what God has told you you're going to do. The enemy comes in and messes with you with depression and, and old woe and feet so that you can get lost in that and you'll forget what the call that's on your life. You get so bad, you forget who you are. You get so bad, you start cussing and going out and I'm through with people and I'm this, that, and the other. And hatred and, and all that begins to cover your heart and you cannot hear from God anymore. I'm trying to 
saying the truth of the enemy. If Joseph would have did that, Joseph would have never been in position to do what he needed to do for his family. You got to go through to get to it. Separate yourself. Everybody, all oh, 20, 2022, I'm this, that, and the other. 2022, separate yourself. Evaluate everything you're doing and make sure you're doing it for the right reason. Come on. Amen. Some of y'all done started businesses and just start doing a bunch of stuff because you can do it. But is it what you're called to do? Right. I was doing stuff but making no money at it. But I could do it. It was wasting time. God got somewhere for you to be. God got something for you to do. But if you keep getting distracted by these people on the sideline, Come on. Bro, David played football. He know that when you in the game, you can't be focusing on the water, boy. You can't be focusing on if you got your game ready, ready. You can't be focused on nothing. The coach got to tell you what he needs to tell you before you get on that field. People on the sideline, you got to on the sideline trying to tell you how to do it. When God showed you the way, follow what God showed you. Some of y'all got some consultants in your life that ain't even saved and trying to tell you what to do. Yeah, come on now. I had somebody, look, I got a friend, he ain't saved, but he want to tell me what I should do. Listen, listen, you should. No, I'm not, I should not be listening. <laughs> come on, Pastor. Come on now, Pastor. In friendship, you can be unequally yoked. Yeah, yeah, come on now. Oh, what are my only friends and family? Mm -hmm. In friendship, you can be unequally yoked. In family, you can be unequally yoked. Oh, my God. But we don't want to listen to that. Right, and we don't know why it ain't working. Right, right, right. First of all, you got to make sure it's something that God told you to do. You know, I told you the story, but I said, you go to the store, you buy something, and, and the first person that pops in your mind, you say, well, if I buy this so and so, go say something, that's who you're in an unhealthy relationship with. Can I help somebody? If you go in the store, I know I went in the store. This, this, this is how God showed it to me. I went in the store. I had money. I wanted to buy me some new shoes for me to preach in. I wanted some new heels. So I went in there. I, I was looking at the heels. I tried them on. I looked good in them. I, I said, oh, I, I can run in here. You got to be able to run in the heels. In case you got to run over there and lay hands on somebody. Yes, yes. Come on, my so when I looked at the and I picked them up and got to looking at them, it was it was the person that came in my mind and said, now if I get these. The Lord stopped me right there and said, you look, that's an unhealthy connection right there. That person is not a good influence on your life. Right. Anytime you're going to get something, you can, God and gave you a way. Come on, he didn't open up the door and you're going to get it. And then, and, I ain't going to this because my mama do I ain't going to wear this because if my mama see me in it, right. you're in an unhealthy relationship with your mother. Right. Especially if you're 40 something thinking about what your mama going to think. Talk about it. Yeah. <laughs> it's time to separate yourself. Yeah, it's mom. time to let go of dead weight. Uh, it's time to let go of dead weight. You got stuff that you need to get done. When they lay you in that casket because the day coming, have you done all that you were supposed to do? I didn't say all that you started going off of a whim, or you was on, on YouTube, or you was on Facebook and somebody else was doing it, so you felt like you could do it. I'm saying your true call. Or are you walking in your true call? Some of y'all don't need to be around nobody. Just avoid this be 
Some of y'all can't tell the difference between God's voice, your flesh, and other people. Come on. God told you to go left, somebody else told you to go straight, and somebody else told you to go right. You want to go pray and say, Lord, which way did I go? He said, Which way did I tell you to go? Let go of people. What you mean separate myself? Exactly what I said. You know why you can't hear the voice of God? Because you got too many voices talking to you. You got too many people that you have put there as leadership in your life, and you don't understand that you got to first be led by God. Brother Jason on this page was talking about leadership, and, and woman was made. To, to be led and all this. But guess what? All of us are made to be led. And if a man ain't led by God, he can't lead you. Be and if, look, and watch it. If both of y'all ain't led by God, neither is going to be a train wreck. Oh, I say that for the beat. Because everybody want to say, who the leader? Who the leader? Man the leader. God is the leader. When my husband met me, guess what? He had to come to church. Yes, he did. I said, if a man ain't gonna find me, he's gonna find me in God. Come on. He got to love God too. Come on. All right, brother David, I'm going to church. Me too. Same church he went to, and, and on, on our day, because when I asked you on the day, we're going to church. Same church. We went to the same church we got married. You got to make a decision in your life. For God I live and for God I die. Why? Because in God is where all your blessings go. You want to know where your husband at? In God. So if you ain't in God, you ain't going to never be there. You want to know where your wife is? In God. So if you ain't in God, you ain't going to never be there. Can I help somebody? Can I help somebody? A lot of y'all, a lot of y'all don't look for a husband at church because y'all don't want to have to have to submit. Watch it. They don't want to have to come on. We submit one to another. I put it on my Facebook page. Because that's where everybody is. On Facebook. <laughs> Hey, Bro, where you live? On Facebook. Half the folks don't even know their address. Don't even know what side of town they own. But I do know you on Facebook. It's time. It's time. Some of y'all want to get married this year. Okay, I'll tell you what you do. I got a challenge for you. Separate yourself from folks. You want to be married this year? You want to be married or either find your fiance before the year's out? Get it, God. Find yourself worshiping God. Live right now like you already married. Because it says when a man find a wife, it say when a man find a girlfriend, it say when a man find a wife. Ooh, Lord. Ooh, somebody mad at me, right? Come on, you already you gotta already know how to be a wife. See, people don't want to listen to the old folk in the church. We don't, oh, they old. I don't want to listen to them. But guess what? You want you want God to stay married. Find find an old couple that's been married and, and, and help them and, and walk with them and, and visit them and take care of them so you can see how to be a wife. Oh Lord, I'm just about this. I just got all all killed all down my back. Oh, I'm gonna get on them. Just hold on. I'm just waiting for mine. You want to find out? We don't listen to elders no more. We don't, we don't want to listen to, to elders no more. Elder tells you the person you with ain't the one. You you gonna still marry because you want to rebel. Oh, I love him. You can't tell me that. Five years later, they knock you all upside your head. Oh Lord Jesus! Y'all like you ready to the door? I'm ready to go. Follow you, whatever you want to do. 
Let's go to these pigs. This is what God takes us. Woo! I don't know if y'all ready for the pigs. Come on. I don't know if y'all ready for that. I put it on the page because that's where I was in my spirit. The Lord was, was working in my spirit. And, uh, <laughs> me and my husband don't want to call it, so. I ain't got no problem with it. Ain't got no problem at all. Ooh, this is being five of them. Y'all, oh my God. Being five ain't gonna stay that hard. Mm -hmm. You always look. But some folks don't really want to be married. They just wanna, they just gonna take somebody out the market so somebody else don't get them. Ooh, 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 pass me. <laughs> oh Lord, I'm trying to stay out for a bit. You don't really want to be married. You just don't want nobody else to have. So if you got to marry, you look, you turn around and can't stand them like. Oh Jesus. Can I help somebody today? We got time for everything else. Do we have time to really be talking? We got time today. <laughs> Ooh, do we got time to really talk though? Well, then go to uh, my, my Facebook page. Uh, you gonna read part two? You gonna read part one? Okay. Part two is on the Facebook page. Uh, uh, for me, God. Twenty one. Can we just, we gonna look, we're going to skip offering and all that. If you want to give, go ahead. It's got cash out on land sale. If you want to give. Uh, Submitting yourselves one to another. Submit, watch this. Watch this. Oh my God. Watch and this. In the fear of God. Watch this. Okay. Submit yourself. Let me tell you how I was going to preach on faith. Whoa. But. I'm going to preach that next time. The Lord said, do this. We got to do this. This is important. Amen. Amen. It says, submit yourself one to another. Brother Darius, in the fear of God. So, Brother Darius, stand up right here. So, Brother Daniels, not only do I submit, because y'all catch it. Catch it. I want you to catch it. Get your, get your glove out until you catch this. Brother Daniels submits to me just as well as I submit to him. Yes, I do. Did y'all catch that? I'm not submitting to Brother Daniels by myself. Submission is a thing that does this. Come on. It makes full serve. So if he, oh Lord, have mercy, because somebody's hand right now. Yes, that's right. It's a circle. That has no break in. That has no break in. No Come on, let it breathe. Let it breathe. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a continuous circle. Sir. That has no break in. No room for nothing to see in between. Wait, stay up. No room, Brother Danny. Come here, Brother Danny. Yes. And they come between us, Brother Danny. Come on, Brother Danny. This is submission. It's me and you. Come on. Mm. Ain't no mama in me. Ain't no daddy. Oh, I'm getting ahead of myself. Don't sit down with me. Go for it. You can talk about that, brother. Because guess what? That's respect for the union that God has put together. It says with fear. Uh, you better, I bet you that. That's why he said when it comes to that day, he said that no man put us under. Uh, a lot of women sitting in church looking at somebody else's husband saying, yeah, they're going to be over in a minute. They're going to be my husband. God told I, I met this lady, she said, I, oh, he married, but God told me. <laughs> Which God showed her though. Oh, exactly. Ah, I don't know what we got. I don't know what we got. But then she said, uh huh, one to another in the fear of God. Uh huh. Wives, uh huh, submit yourselves unto your own husband. Stop right there. Oh, 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 oh. Say a word again to your own. Oh, yeah, thank you. I didn't speak one more. To your own. To your own husband. Somebody mad at me right now. But the word of God says, submit yourself to your own husband. Right. Like I said again, on your own husband. 
Your daddy is somebody else's husband. Right. Can I just break this down? I just want to break it down. Because you don't break stuff down for us. Your own husband, the pastor. Come on, if he's a male pastor, that's, that, that, that's first lady. Husband. Right. Oh my God. Sure. And I said it easy. Come on. And I said, my husband told you to cook some meat. You said, I got Bible study. I cook it when I get back. This is the this is quick. Who wrong? She is. Your yeah. husband say, stay tonight with me. I want us to spend time together. She turns and say, on my Bible study night, you know I go to Bible study. Who's wrong? She's wrong. They don't want to hear that. Come on. I had to stand there for a minute. Oh, yeah. I got to stand there for a minute. Woo! I had to stand there for a minute. I had to stand there for a minute. I had to stand there for a minute. Because the pastor, if the pastor is walking up right, then the pastor say, what did your husband say? Oh, uh, Lord. I'm going to run around the church. See how I'm going to bang now. Right, right, right. Come on, woman of God. For the husband is the head of the wife. Oh. What does it say, woman of God? For the husband is the head of the wife. Even as Christ is the head of the church. Oh, my God. And he is the savior of the body. Watch this. Watch this. Sit on the people. Come on. You want to know why you keep fighting with your husband? Oh, Lord. Let me not go there. I'm going to go here. Go there. Go back. Go back. Go back. Don't stay in their business. You already have. Stay where you at. You're having back. trouble in the household because you don't understand order. Oh, Jesus. We don't preach this no more. We don't preach this no more. You were having a hard time in the household because you don't understand order. Now, let's start here. The reason you are pushing and, 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 and talking on him is because you married somebody that you can push around. See, if you would have married the woman, come on, and go that day for you, then you're going to tell yourself about my husband. I can push my husband around. Say no more. Listen. I can't tell you something. This is a real man right here. Woo! Let's say But watch this. It's this order right here that God say favor come with. It's the order that He said in His word that favor come with. Amen. See, people don't understand. Let me tell y'all for example. I want to go buy a truck when I got some money. I say I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. This is room first bed. I say I want to go and buy me a a, a, a car a truck. Right. I found an SUV. Now my daddy taught me well. He said let a man. Go make the deal. Now, I ain't saying that a woman can't make the deal. I'm not saying that. Right. I'm talking about order. So I turned to Brother Daniels. Yes. And I said, I'm going to buy this truck. I gave him all my money. You heard what I said? I gave him all my money. I gave him all my money. But why you going to be with somebody that you can't trust? Oh, oh, that was a good one, wasn't it? Yeah. How you gonna be with somebody that you can't trust with your whole life? Mm. I told Brother Daniels I want to buy a truck and I gave him all my money. To Brother Daniels. Brother Daniels, not on, we go, we roll up on the truck. Nah. Yeah. Now he know how much money I got. Before we get out the truck, this is what. The head of my life say to me, he said, we going to tell them we we paying this much and nothing high. I submit to what he said. Didn't say nothing. Some folks say, that's old school. This is 2022. Do what you do. <laughs> but I know when we pulled up and that man came to the truck and started showing us the truck. Brother Daniels didn't have to say nothing. The same price Brother Daniels told me in that truck, that man told him, was this, this, I'll give it to you for this amount of money. Right. Y'all even get 
you what happened in it. I'm talking about faith. Yeah. I'm talking about order. I'm talking about I submitted to him. Come on. I submitted to him and he submitted to me. He could say what I got to do by the Lord. Oh, my. But when you understand order and understand that favor is associated with order. Right. Come on, brother. For the husband is the head of the wife, uh -huh. even as Christ is the head of the church, uh -huh. and he is the savior of the body. He oh, it, stop. He's the what of the body? The savior. The husband protects. The husband builds. The husband puts a, a fortress around his wife and his family. The husband does, oh, I'm getting my head myself. This is what God said the husband is. He says Christ No, the church is Christ is to the church. So whatever Christ is to the church, that's what the husband is supposed to be to his household. Amen. Come on, oh, Lord, I'm too busy. Right. We got time today. Come on, woman, God. Therefore, uh -huh. as the church is subject to Christ, uh -huh. so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. You know what subject means? Respect. But let, let, let's let's uh let's emphasize again own husband. Own oh, husband. Say it. Now you keep keep saying own husband for a reason. So oh, let your wives yeah. be to their own husband. Own oh, husband in yeah. everything. In everything. The own wait, husband. Wait, wait, wait. In everything. My husband, I'm going to come in, my husband. Come on. We say, well, why he got to know everything? Don't let your right hand know what your left hand is doing. I come against you in the name of Jesus. You want your house to be blessed? You want to stop fussing and arguing in the house? And the husband standing in his position and the wife standing in her position, guess what? That they going to flow. It's that be that means that I, that means that I, I, I uh, respect your authority. Right. I respect the position you have taken in my life. That's why I say a lot of us married folk we can run over. Right. And a lot of men married women that can run over. Because nobody wants to stand up and be who they are actually called to be. If, if you go marry the right woman, you won't have to be responsible. Come on, my husband ain't taking no trash out. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. You not touch that trash. He don't ask me for no bill, money. I'm trying to help somebody today. Come on, pastor. If I say, baby, what about you? He said, what you worried about, son? I told you I came to make your life easier. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I can't say that. We may need help, huh? Nobody wants to be responsible. Everybody living with their mama. Everybody wants you come, they want your wife to come move in with you and your mama. Ooh, that was crazy. You want to marry him, he don't even have nowhere to take you. He got to move in your place. Mm. You done worked, went to college, you did all that, got out of Then you go marry somebody that, that's still living in their mama basement. In her den, and they, they still in their childhood room. Did you mad? Because when, when that part of a woman that needs a man can't find a man in the mansion and the boy she got, did you mad? I got to somebody big. The Lord told me I can't do this and be like that. No, I can't. Was that it from the Lord for that child? Brother Daniel's fortune. Yes, yes. Oh, we got done. Hold on. Go ahead, Mother God. What does it say, Mother God? Husband. Husband. Love your wife. Love the wife. Love your wife. Love your wife. Come on. Even as Christ also loved the church. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Love your wife. 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 As Christ, even as Christ also loved the church uh -huh, and, and gave himself for it. Okay, read that again. And gave his blood. And gave himself for it. I think three times is good. And, and gave himself and for gave it. himself for it. A selfish man can now be. Ooh. 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 Just so long. Oh. Just gave the 
the room for it. Oh, they made me face the wall. No, 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 you are there. You are there. A selfish man is not ready to be married. Come on. Now, I didn't okay. say selfish men don't get married. Because some men selfish, some selfish men get married because they selfish. Say that one more time. You can't say it in a minute. Say that one more time. Okay. A lot of selfish men get married because they are selfish. Mm. Mm. If I can't have you, nobody will. Mm. You ain't ready to be married. You ain't ready to be married. Right. Because you're great. And God needs to heal you and work out a couple things. Okay, in, home. Lord, they throw it off. in your home. Jesus. Love your wife. As like Christ loved church. I watch it. And gave his life for it. You got to give your life. If you look, don't marry a woman if you ain't willing to give your life for her. And I'm sorry, I ain't trying to break off these engagements. But if you, if you, if something in your head say, let me think about that, you ain't ready. I don't know if I'm going to give my life, but I see some men. I see some men push the woman in front of you. Come on. Are you willing to give your life? That means everything, all that look. Some of y'all ain't going to give a video, okay? It's okay. But, <laughs> but you got to give up the club. You got to start working. Yeah. You got to start making sacrifices. Not just for your wife, but for your children. For your children's children. You got to now come out of an apartment and look for a house. You got to sacrifice yourself for your family. Yeah. Women, if we ain't going to sacrifice for you, move on. Mm. We're going to go half on this. <laughs> We're we going we to put in, we going to go half on this. But the Lord said that He put the mantle on the husband. Amen. Come on, he said, Show me. Let me tell you, I was raised in a house where, where, uh, with a father that was barely there because he was at work. His wife didn't have to ask for nothing. She didn't have to borrow nothing from nobody. She didn't have to figure out how she was going to do something. Guess what? He come in, put the check on the table, and go to sleep, eat what he want to eat. Come on. Come on. Say you can't preach about nothing you don't know about. I know about it. I've seen it. Then when, when, when my, me and my sister started growing up, my mom started teaching us how to fix the lunch. Come on. Iron his pants. Come on. Look. We don't do that no more. Why we gotta do, why we gotta be domesticated? It ain't about being domesticated. It's about understanding that you give, he give, you give, he is a serve. We take we in this thing for real. Come on. And then we don't understand why stuff comes to end because somebody gets selfish. Somebody begins to say, What about me? You go listen to your homegirls. Come on. That's unhappy in their marriages, and now you at home give your husband the blues about something got nothing to do. Stop. Oh, I miss some people being so sad. Was that the end? Uh, Where we at? Come on, verse uh, Verse twenty-six. That he may sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of the water by the word. That's gonna be the end of that. That he may sanctify and cleanse it. See, the only way he can sanctify and cleanse it is because both people are in order. Amen? And I ain't ta I'm talking about Christians. Let me help some folk out there that's mad. They mad at me right now. But I ain't talking to you. I'm talking to Christians. They're happy. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm talking about a Christian lifestyle. I'm talking about what God has ordained for, for it to be. Come on. I'm talking about how God has set it up so that the favor of the Lord is on your life, the favor of the Lord. Come on. Me and Brother Dixon see so much so happy. Let me tell y'all something. Let me help you out. It ain't easy all the time. Because you know, y'all know we see them doing stuff. Come on. And be like, I know an easier way to do it. If you would just did this, da 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 da. But sometimes what you, come on, it ain't necessary. Maybe they need to go through do it the hard way. Come on. Submit. Amen. The husband submit to the wife. Come on. So God can take the 
sanctify and cleanse it. Come on, amen. From the day you point to. We got time for time. Don't worry about that. Okay, don't worry. Uh, you know, 47, right? Uh, wait. Okay, over here. Right here. Go down this way. Okay. Can we just do some counseling this morning? Amen. Ephesians 5. Ephesians 5. Oh, go ahead. Oh, that's what you were. What color you want to do? Can you call one? Yeah, you call one. No. I didn't put the same thing in. Something different right there. Let's peek. Let's peek. Let me let me find it. Oh, glory. We got time, amen. Amen. Glory to God. Tell y'all something about this word, amen. That's why a lot of people don't want to go to spiritual counseling. There we go. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Let's look at uh. First Peter 3. Ooh, I don't know if y'all can handle this though. First Peter 3. We're going to start at verse 1. Yep. That's it. That's it. First Peter 3. Yes, that's it. That's exactly it. Yeah, but okay, go ahead. Likewise. Uh huh. Be wise be in subjection. To your own husband. There it is again. Let's stop. There it is again. To your own what? Husband. Let me tell y'all, I, I figured this out when I was studying. I figured this out why God said it so many times. Because he knew that, it, that women, that it's so many of us that makes it hard. <laughs> Sometimes, come on. Glory to God. That's why women pray so much. Sometimes there be some stuff we want to say. Here's a suggestion to your own husband. Go ahead, Brother Danny. That if any obey not the word, they also obey without the word. Be won by the conversation of the wives. Why? I'm sorry. Let me break that down. Because people also obey the word. They're trying to throw some of them off. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. So let me, let me break it down for you. It says, if any obey not the word, it's right. talking about if any husband obey not the word. But some people just read this and dumb it all up, but we can read now. Amen? It says, if any obey not the word, they also may without the word be won by the conversation of the wives. You know what that's saying? Oh, I know. That if you chase your conversation, be careful what you say, even if your husband is out there acting what he can act, come on, then guess what? Your conversation can win him to Christ. Did I help him? Yeah. It said, those that are without the word can be won by the conversation of the wife. Come on. Even sometimes when you know he's wrong, and he knows he's wrong, if you humble yourself and respect his authority later on, he might pull you to side, baby. Oh, you were saying he was right. You, were right. you know what I'm saying? We're gonna go this way. Come on. But I know some of us, sometimes sometimes we just gotta say what we want to say. I'm gonna say it how I want to say it because I'm wrong, you ain't my daddy, blah 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 blah. You are Lord. Amen. Go ahead, brother Davis. While they behold your chaste conversation coupled with fear. Uh huh. Coupled with respect. Can I help you, people? Mm -hmm. When they behold your chaste, see, some people say, oh, it's back in there. Oh, you're going all the way back. He's not telling you to go and put on, put on a long dress and a head cup. He's scared. That's not what he's saying. He's saying, have some respect. Right. Come on. Have some respect. So when you, even when you're out with friends or whatever, People will respect what you respect. Amen? But if you don't respect your own household, 
If you don't respect your own husband, what makes you think people come to your house and respect your house? Come on. Ooh, come on. Who's adorning? Uh -huh. Let it not be that outward adorning of plaiting the hair uh -huh. and of wearing of gold uh -huh. or of putting on of apparel. But let it be the hidden man of the heart. Stop right there. He said, don't, don't be thinking this because you're so cute right. and you're dressing it all up and you think that's all your worth is. He said, let be your heart. Come on. He said, don't, don't, don't let that be what you make running stuff. He said, you need to let your heart be clean. Come on. So that when you speak, it's from your heart. Come on. Because there's a lot of folks that's about their money. What can you put? Look, can I go shopping? Do I have a latest this and a latest that? And they heart ain't in the marriage. Right. They go right back when you're going to find them in God. Come on. Right. In Let's that, go. And that which is not corrupted, mm. even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, mm -hmm. which is in the sight of God, a great price. Amen. Oh, Lord, this is right here. Oh, God. Oh, my God. Mm -hmm. Let me point out the words that are such. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Even the ornament of a meek a quiet spirit, Amen. which is in the sight of God of great price. Because God knows how hard it is. Plus, stop talking. It is not easy sometimes. That's why I say it, it is uh it is a mystery how the two become one because you got this person that's been living their life. You got another person that's been living their life. And then y'all got to come together and be one. So go down. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. And a lot of women take it as, oh, you're trying to get rid of my opinion. No. Mm -hmm. We're talking about keeping peace in the home. We're talking about being able, you know, to have more men in the home. Right. For you both to be able to build one another up. But understand, if both people are not in one accord, guess what? You won't look. That household won't be. Amen. Let's go. But well, after this, uh -huh. manner, uh -huh. in the old time, uh -huh. the holy woman also, holy women also, trusting in God, uh -huh. adorned themselves, being in subject subjection unto their own husband. Amen. Just right here. That's that's it right there. Just right here. He keeps saying, "Be subject to your what? Your own husband." He said, your own husband. A husband. Love your wife as Christ loves the church. I don't have time to go into the other part. Praise God. Amen. But it, it says in, in one scripture how it says you would want to treat your wife like, like you want to be treated. Come on. Treat your wife the way you treat yourself. But this deal with it. If you marry a man and harms himself, his own drugs, and drinking, and doing all that, what makes you think he's not going to harm you? He harms himself. Come on, did I make that plain? Yeah. Was that real plain? Yeah. Come on, amen. Yeah. Glory to God. So this word today, praise God, amen. This word today, amen, God started us off to separate yourself. Amen. Glory to God, amen. Some miracles, you need to pick and choose who you, who you have, uh, <laughs> who, you got who you got around you. Y'all don't want me going today. Yeah, married couple swinging with each other and all that. Go. Go. Amen. Separate yourself. In this year, pray God. If you want different, do different. Amen. Hallelujah. If you want to experience different, then do something different. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. It's time, like they say, you want to clean out your club, clean out your house. Amen. Clean up these friendships. Come on. Some of the friendships y'all keep because it's, it's a put back into the world and see your old lifestyle. Time to step on the top. Come on, amen. And, or, or in other words, it's time to grow up. Amen. Whoever God told you to get away from, this is the year. Get on away from, get your life together. Get on the right path that God has set for your life in marriage. If you are married, praise God, seeking to be married, get in your word. Amen. 
Find out how the word say you do it, amen. Hallelujah. And get chased after God. Amen. Come on, let's give God a hand clap of praise. That word was so sweet, amen. Ooh, that was a lot of nuggets, people. Ooh, that was a lot of nuggets. And, and I'm, I'm so excited about what God is doing this year, praise God. We're going to have a lot of word, amen. We got a lot of word, ladies. Like, it's a lot of word because it's a lot of things that we are allowing in church that don't supposed to be in here. Amen. It's a lot of things that we're doing in our in our everyday life. I'm not talking about what you're doing in church. Y'all show up in good church. I am talking about what you do outside of church. Fornication, live, back, body, stealing, cheating, all that kind of stuff. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. This all year, praise God, we're going to ask God to cut that out of your life. Amen. Yes. But watch this. It comes out fasting and praying. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. So we're going to be doing a Daniel fast coming up soon. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And those that want to be on that fast with us, praise God. We got to praise God. Amen. We don't mind. Amen. You want to go on it with us? Me and my husband have already started. Praise God. Amen. And some form. Amen. Right. Hallelujah. We cut out beef, pork. Oh. No more bacon. No more bacon. Well, we can turn the bacon. Turn bacon. God be the glory. I'm missing, <laughs> I'm missing pork chops already. Woo! The God be the glory. But guess what? This one, don't, don't eat it. Right. I'm not, Amen. I'm I'm so, it's a lot of things. If God wants us to be healthy, praise God. He said, I want you to, uh, He said, I want you to prosper and be in good health as much as your soul prosper. This year, we play for our soul. Amen. God bless you. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this word today. Come on, brother David. Yeah. We thank you for this word today. Father, God, we ask that you, that you bless and keep us, Father God, that this word God fell on good ground. And someone heard it and said, What must I do to be saved? Or, Lord, help me get my life in order. Yeah. And that person is humbling themselves right now. We ask you, Father God, to just touch them where the six and the lay. And help them, Father God, to develop a prayer life. Develop a life of devotion where they're reading your word and allowing you to talk to them. And Lord, we thank you for right now. Your son Jesus' name. Amen. And his brother. Amen. Oh my God. Again, like I said, each and every Sunday, we are blessed to have a pastor who has no problem getting in our business. You know, and guiding us in the right way that God tells us and ordains her to lead us. And I just thank God for that, uh, the fact that that happens right here in this uh, house of God. So we just want to say thank you once again for joining us uh, this Sunday morning at the Eagles United Ministry. And we look forward to seeing you again next week, where we will be coming to you with the word of God and only the way our pastor knows how to do it. Okay. We're, we're, uh, I'm, I'm kind of behind. Okay, Sister Alicia, we're going to need you to come up here and um, cover these announcements this morning. You know, the people need to know the good things that we got going on today and how they can help and, and get us uh, to get our job done. Amen. Amen. For this month, your honor, God, our pastor, that was an awesome word. Yeah, yeah. She was in a bunch of people business. I gotta say, she was living in my business and everything. Some of the stuff she said, I kind of got some rebuttals for it, but God said it and that just that settled it. So, <laughs> no more rebuttals. Okay. Yeah, yeah. January 21st, 22nd, and 23rd. Mm -hmm. the woman at the well. Huh? Woman at the well. Divine appointment. Oh. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. Never thirst again. And go tell somebody. Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Yeah. Divine appointment. You got to show up and be what God said you need to be. Come on. I can't wait for that. I can't wait for that. Who the devil was so busy getting me here this morning? But that divine appointment, I showed up. Yeah. I needed to hit this. Yeah. Never thirst again. Uh, that woman at the well told him, yeah. Come see a man. No! Uh, uh, yeah, told well. me all about myself. Yeah. Mm. I ain't going to be thirsty no more. Uh, 
When she got through what she did, she told him, come to your man. Oh, Lord, I got to tell somebody. There's no somebody. There's no somebody. I got to go tell somebody. So y'all be here. Be here. 916 8th Avenue North, right here in Texas City. Yeah. So I ask no questions while we weigh out here in Texas City. We all live out of you. But this is our divine appointment. Yeah. This is what God said for us to be. Yeah. July 21st, 22nd, 23rd, Woman at the Well Conference, right here at Eagles United Ministries. Yeah. 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 Amen. 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 I, I I remember last year the woman at the wheel conference and how much of a just an inspiration and how much fire was in this house that that he, you know everybody here was on God on, on fire for God that year and I just look forward to seeing it once again you know we are uh, um, at the dawn of a new year as my um, pastor said and we we just. You know, God put it on my heart this year to uh, let go of some things, like, like my wife said, to, to uh, you know, be by yourself sometimes. But sometimes being by yourself means mean getting rid of some of your stuff in your life, too. You know, so, um, you know, I, I had it in my heart this morning about um, the scripture, Hebrews 12 and 1, that, uh, I like to uh, think of that, that scripture that it says, um, you know, in, in God's word, no excess baggage is allowed. You know, 12 and 1 speaks of no excess baggage. It's, it says, um, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily trips us up. That's what if you, you want to go to a scripture and help your life this year, help you get rid of some of the foolishness that you've been doing all last year, and you think you're gonna get something new this year because you drug it over here in 2022. Guess what? I want you to get up in the morning. I don't care if you gotta do it. What they say if you do it 20 days in a row and 21 days in a row to come to heaven. I want you to do it for 21 days in a row. Read Hebrews 12 and 1. Just read it to yourself in the morning. For you, for your, sometimes you got to read before you put your feet on the floor. You know, you, you know y'all uh, check Facebook while you're laying in the bed in the morning for you, for, you, for you brush your teeth. Yeah, and look, the Bible is on your phone because it's on mine. So I tell you what, I want you to make that your mandate. 12 and 1, Hebrews. And get that trash out your life that you're trying to drag with you in 2022. And watch how much God blesses you and lightens your load. Amen. So I just wanted that, uh, I just felt that there's somebody out there who needed to hear this this morning. That you can't take that trash with you this time. Put it down, let it go, leave it there, and move on to where God has ordained for your feet to be. Amen. So may God be a blessing to the hearers and the doers of the word. And again, I want to thank God for the service that we had this morning. And uh, bless those eagles who are out there who need to be in the house. We hope to see y'all soon. And we love y'all. Amen. Amen.